What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome into a Tuesday morning episode of the Daily Juice Podcast with me, Matt Peralta at Sports Talk Matt to follow me across all socials. Happy Halloween, everybody. I want to wear a mask after what's been going on the last four days. It has not been good. It has been a lot of tricks, not a lot of treats coming your way here on the Daily Juice Podcast. This podcast being brought to you by our friends at omahasteaks.com, promo code JUICE in the search bar, and you guys go and get yourself $30 off the already 50% off going on right now with their semi-annual sale at omahasteaks.com, promo code JUICE in the search bar activates that $30 off. Minimum purchase may be required. 100% money back satisfaction guarantee. Not happy. The 26-yard field goal was missed that would have cashed the team total and would have made it a two-and-two night. Would have been no harm. There was a holding call that took away a touchdown. That was frustrating. There was a fumble inside the red zone that was not a fumble. That was frustrating. When you're cold, these are the times I'm going to remind you of when things are good when I say, look, I know these hard times are going to pop up, okay? We're under, we were up 37 units, I think that was the peak, and we've given a ton back, and now we're under 30 units since I've come back here in February of 2023 to the Daily Juice, okay? Still profitable, still doing well in certain sports, but we're now under 500 money-wise. We're losing money in hockey in 2023, which is somewhat frustrating. We're still over 500, but the juice has gotten to us. So we're down a couple of units in the NHL, which is frustrating. Baseball is, you know, we're still profitable in baseball, amazingly enough, but not a lot. We are still profitable in the NFL, but not a lot. We're just giving money back here. We had a nice peak, and now we're cold. So if you want to fade these bets, I do do not, I will not be offended. I'm not going to mind, okay? Just how I'm running, and when I run this cold, I mean, that kick, <laughs> you could say the kicker made four or five, and I would say, yeah, but the fact that the, that the Lions needed to kick that many field goals is the problem. They had too many drives inside the red zone stall. They had too many turnovers inside the red zone. I mean, look, if you're a conspiracy theorist, I'm not one of them, but that's a game you're going to use. You're going to say, of course, look at that. I mean, how do you miss a 26-yard kick? How do you call a fumble a fumble when you didn't see it? This is a really big problem for the NFL. Officiating is horrific right now. And this new idea, I love replay, okay? But the referees are chicken bleep. They are using replay to bail their asses out. So the ball comes out they automatically rule it a fumble because when you rule it a fumble, it goes upstairs. It's somebody else's problem then. It's not their problem. It's somebody else's problem. It's New York's problem. If they say it's a fumble, then great. If they don't, okay, then it's not, but it's not our fault. The problem is, is the way the rule is written. The rule is written that there must be you know, irrefutable evidence to overturn the call on the field. So if you say fumble to kick in the replay, and there's no evidence of whether or whether or not the runner actually did fumble. You have to stick with the call on the field. So a call that shouldn't have been called a fumble gets called a fumble simply because it bails the referees out. It's embarrassing. I mean, this is not what we wanted with replay. This is the problem, and this is what a lot of people who are anti-replay said. The referees will use it as a crutch. It's not their problem anymore. It's somebody else's problem. It's not their problem. It's awful. So all those things had to happen. A 26-yard field goal got missed. I was watching on a sportsbook app. They counted it as good. They thought, there's no way the guy missed it. It's a 26-yard kick. He makes over $600,000 to be a kicker. You kick a ball. 26-yard kick. It's inside of a field goal. It's inside of an extra point. It's the definition of a chip shot. 26 points. We lose by a point and a half on the team total. Right handicap. But <laughs> doesn't matter when you handicap it right. Doesn't matter if you are on the quote right side. Did the bet cash? The answer is no. The over came nowhere close to hitting for baseball. It was a 3 1 final. So I bet over nine. Nope. Nowhere near. Max Scherzer was very good, although he got hurt. Garcia got hurt, which is monster in my mind. Heading into a bullpen game, which is a bad situation for the Rangers coming up here today for game number four. 
And then the first period when they score three goals, <laughs> way off Ducks and or the Stars and um, I'm forgetting who the Stars even played. Didn't matter because they gave they went in there and scored a ton of goals and it was over fast. So uh, who did they play? They played oh Columbus right <laughs> two one. Columbus scored two goals on Ottinger. Huh? Ottinger was bad last night. So three sports, three bets. Okay. Again, you want to fade these plays. I'm not going to be upset at all, but it is a Tuesday. And that means it's time for another rendition of Totals Tuesday, trying to get ourselves back on the right track. Let's start in the NBA with the late game in the NBA. It is San Antonio on the road taking on the Phoenix Suns. The total is 227. Open at 229. It's down to 227. San Antonio is 2-1 and one to the over on the year. Phoenix is 1-2 and two to the over on the year, so 2-1 and one to the under. They are 1-0 and oh at home to the over. They played against Utah in their last game, and they won 126-104, to 104, went over by 7 points. That total was 223. This total is 227. Went under against the Lakers on the road, went under against Golden State on the road. At home for San Antonio, their first two games went over. They scored... 119, gave up 126, they scored 122, and scored 126 in overtime against the Houston Rockets in their first and only win of the season. This is uh, their, their fourth game against the Clippers on the road two days ago. They scored 83 points, and this is why I'm taking the under. One, pace of play. Two, I think when you look at the way that San Antonio will play on the road, yeah, it's one by Yama, but there's not, I mean, the matchup stats aren't good here. But I'm not laying seven with Phoenix. Seven's that number that makes you stop and go, eh, you're going to get backdoored. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with free throws at the end. I don't want, you know, last second layups. I'm not interested in doing that. But, you know, San Antonio is only scoring 109 points per game. Phoenix is only scoring 109 points per game. The difference is that San Antonio is giving up 123, okay? So you don't want to see that happen here, okay? But because of the fact that, San Antonio probably is only going to score 85 points. There is nothing out right now for me, okay? So here's one another way to bet this if you want. San Antonio team total under or Phoenix Suns team total over? I don't want to lay the seven. I think we combine for an, um, an under game because I don't think the Spurs are going to score up against this defense for Phoenix, okay? I think Phoenix can... Get out on the perimeter. I think they can handle Wembeyama to a point. And I don't think you're going to see on the road San Antonio score very much. 83 points in their last game. I'm going to roll with the under. Under 27 and a half. San Antonio and Phoenix. I think this number is too high. It's a couple of buckets too high. Not going to be a fun bet. I'm telling you we'll be sweating this. But bet the under. And then if it crashes and starts slow, try to middle it. Okay, always a 10 point middle. Okay, so if it starts slow in the first quarter and it's like 210, 213, somewhere in that range, bet the over. Try to middle it and not have a, you know, I'm going to try to do that so it's not like a crazy sweat because I don't, I I might love with this bet. I like it. I just, I I like taking positions here when the number's too high for the NBA. Hope for a slow start, get a better number in game, and then try to middle it. So under 227, San Antonio and Phoenix. Okay, bet number two, Vancouver hosting Nashville. It is Soros in net for the Nashville Predators, who is 4-4 and with a 2.49 goals against average. Soros, 3-2, 3-2, 5-1, 4-1, his last four games. They've won three of those four games. Two, three, one, and one goals given up here, okay? You have a Vancouver team where you're going to get Thomas Demko in net, sorry, Thatcher Demko, excuse me, Thatcher Demko in net for Vancouver. He, 5-0, 3-2, 4-3, his last four games. 0-2, 4-2 goals given up in his last four games. You've got a team in the Predators who right now they're playing, you know, typical Predators hockey, 3-2 type hockey. I'm betting under six. Some books have gone to five and a half. You can find six at minus 118 at certain books. Watch FanDuel. FanDuel generally has the off number price, okay? FanDuel is at six and going down. They don't like 
they'll probably be a five and a half pretty quickly. So they're at six and a half. They'll be a five and a half pretty quickly. Oh, no, they're at five and a half already. Sorry. No. DraftKings is what you want to jump into. DraftKings is at six. That's where I got it. So uh, six minus 118 here. I'm trying to see where else for tomorrow. Anywhere else you can look at here. Um, yeah, it's pretty much it's it's painted six here in Vegas. Superbook. Is at minus 120. Six circus at minus 120. South Point's flat minus 110. Uh, you got 118 at DraftKings, 110 at Caesars. So we're going under six. Vancouver and Nashville, Demko against Soros. Those goalies are important, okay? If for some reason those two goalies do not play, punt out of this, okay? Under six, 1.1 units, under six for. Vancouver and Nashville, good push potential at six here with the 4-2 final. But again, if you want to fade this bet, I'm not going to be angry. And then finally, for baseball, I'm going to take the Diamondbacks to tie this series at two games apiece. It's Andrew Haney against Joe Mantiply. I like Mantiply a lot more than Andrew Haney. I don't like Andrew Haney at all starting this game, and I have no clue how long he will go. But any game with Andrew Heaney starting in it, I I mean, I'm taking the other side, in particular on the road for Andrew Heaney. I mean, the last time he pitched, you know, he he came in briefly in that 9-1 win. He gave up one hit. But the last time he came in for like a meaningful game, he pitched against Houston, gave up one run. But he started on Thursday, 10-19 in that game. He started the game. He gave went, went two thirds of an inning. Three earned runs given up in a 10-3 loss at home, mind you. This is on the road, but no way. Andrew Heaney is starting. Bullpen for the Rangers is not good. It's a roller coaster ride game. They want to get back to their starting pitchers tomorrow. Diamondbacks, money line, minus 105. I'm taking the D-backs, even up the series, at two games apiece. Again, if you want to fade this, go right ahead. I totally understand if you want to do that. But I think the Diamondbacks, who won both games, by the way, in the regular season at home against the Rangers. They lost last night. I expect them to bounce back. And Garcia may not play. It looks like he's out after getting injured last night. It's a big loss in that lineup. It's a guy who 39 home runs, 245 average, 107 RBIs. I mean, to lose him, that's your top home run guy and your top RBI guy to be out of the lineup, even for one day. I could easily see the Rangers saying, look it, we're good. We got the one. We know we're going back home for at least one game for game six. If we, if we lose this game here, lose the next two, we're going home. We lose this, we go up three games to two, win game five, go home for game six, win the World Series at home, and we're all good, okay? So I'm going Diamondbacks, money line, minus 105 for 1.05 units to even up the World Series at two games apiece, all right? San Antonio and the Phoenix Suns, under 227 for 1.1 units. We're going under six, Vancouver and Nashville, at minus 110, I'm taking the money line for the Arizona Diamondbacks. I can't do a total in this game. I lean under, but I can't you can't I can't bet the under on a game involving bullpens. I just can't do it. Okay. So just I'm not gonna touch the total in this game. Just gonna bet the Diamondbacks to win the game and even up their series here at one at two games apiece. My name is Matt Peralta. You guys can follow me across socials at Sports Talk Matt each and every morning. The Daily Juice Podcast. Oh, it's being brought to you by OmahaStakes.com. 